Hello, and welcome to our Surge Experience Online. It is a joy to have you join us today and an honor to share our ministry with you. We pray you will be blessed by the worship, the message, and the ministry. If you are new to Surge, we want to welcome you. Please log on to our website at surgechurch.tv and complete the online connect card that you will find on the main graphic of the homepage. It will be a privilege to connect with you and to be a part of your spiritual growth. As we gather together today, let's join in worship, receive God's word in faith, and stay connected in spirit. Get ready because the Surge Experience starts now. Well, good morning. God bless you. I'm so excited to be in the house today, and I hope you are as well. Are you guys ready for the word today? Come on. Are you ready for the word? We're wrapping up our series on worship, why we worship, why we worship. You know, it's not that we worship. It, we we got to know the why behind what we do. It's the why. You know, every business needs to know the why. Every team's got to remember, why do you do this? You know, a lot of people today, they just are burnt out. And they're not burnt out because of what they do. They're burnt out because they forgot the why they do it. When you forget the why behind what you're doing, you lose your way, and you lose your attitude, and you lose your spirit, and your flesh gets involved. But we've got to know the why. And it's not that we want to just come into church and say, clap, sing, raise your hand, sit. Why do we do this? And what happens is it just becomes a monkey see, monkey do. And, and it's a, But why do we do these things? So in this series, we've talked about the sound of worship, the importance of making the sound of worship. And last uh, a few weeks ago, we were talking about why the Bible tells you to clap and why the Bible tells you to shout and why the Bible tells you to lift up your hands. You know, when you go into the world and you go to the, you, you'll see, I mean, you go to the concerts or the, you'll see, you'll pass by and you'll see a, a club and they're, they're downtown and it'll just be booming on the inside and people are dancing and all this stuff and they're excited, but then they come to church, you're like, Oh, all right. I mean, why do we have to get so solemn and somber when it comes to church? We ought to be just excited as people in the world, more excited because God's good. His mercy endures forever. He loved you when you were still a sinner. I'm talking about you and what you used to do. And he loved you. Enough. Man, this ought to be the place where you're jumping and shouting and clapping and praising, not just like come into this like... <laughs> You ought to be excited. Why? Because God is good. He's good. He's, too, he's not just good. He's too good. So today I want to talk to you real quickly about worship with thanksgiving. You know, one, of a, one key to a powerful worship experience starts with thanksgiving. You can't approach God's presence without thanksgiving. It is the passcode to getting into his presence. It's like if you want to go into the courts of God the keypad, you have to push in on the keypad, thanksgiving, or else the gate will not open. God is so good. He's done so much for you and me. It will, the gate will not open when we come into his presence and come in here with an attitude as if he's not done something for you. You know, my Sydney will be... He is addicted to Hershey's with almonds. And if you go to the store and you don't get him one, his life is over. It's like, I mean, he physically shows. But then if you go and get him one, you're such a good dad. I'm like, shut up, you little punk, and eat this candy bar. You know what? We don't need to be that way with God. Like, if he did something for me, and then I'm going through something, I'm going through a struggle. Well, where's God? I don't know. Come on. He's right there in the middle of the fire with you. He's right there. He's with you on your good day. He's with you on your worst day. And he's with you on your worser day. He is right there standing in the fire with you. That's a reason why you've got to always come into his presence with thanksgiving. Psalm 100, 1 through 5 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, not sadness. Ready to Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good 
His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. So Psalm 100 is actually titled a psalm of thanksgiving. It's a short, but it's a very descriptive psalm detailing how we're to enter the courts of God in worship. So in verse 4, it states that we're to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. So we know that experiencing God's presence is predicated on his people coming into his presence with the spirit of thanksgiving. So we're told uh, what the expression of thanksgiving looks like and what it sounds like. It's shouts, right? It's gladness. It's joy, right? It's singing. So God, God's like, look, I'm going to tell you how to come into my presence with thanksgiving. And I'm going to tell you what thanksgiving looks and sounds like. He, he's just taking it off the table. He's like, I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer. You want to come into my presence? You come with, thank, with a thankful heart. You come with a spirit of thanksgiving. You do it with shouts. There's a lot of shouting in the world, especially today. You know, there's a lot of shouting on social media. You can just see some people's the tweets and the, their posts, and they typed it with an angry shout. You could just see them uh, pressing the button a little bit harder. But I want to tell you right now, we don't need to have the shouts of anger and rage like the world. We need to have the shouts of joy and gladness and come into his presence with some singing of heart. These expressions of thanksgiving describe a celebration. We're to celebrate the goodness of God as we enter into his presence with shouting and gladness and joy and singing. The psalm helps us to understand the distinction between praise and and worship. You know, we often think of praise and worship as the same thing, and they're certainly connected, but one is born out of the other. Praise is how you start. You come into his, you come into his courts and his sanctuary with thanksgiving and with praise. It's a celebration of shouts of joy and gladness, and then what happens? God begins to move in. Then that leads to worship where you're humbling yourself in a holy reverence to the Lord. Come on, amen. You know, one is essential in order to experience the other. God requires that we come before him with praise and celebration. This allows the presence of God to manifest in our midst as we humble ourselves in worship to him. You know, Thanksgiving is an essential a part of ushering in God's presence through our praise and worship. That's why we're instructed in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, it says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, which is the manner of some, and so much more as you see the day approaching. You know, you can almost, in today's world, you could almost change it and say, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, which is the manner of many. <laughs> you know, the average Christian in America goes to church once, once out of every four Sundays. Come on. Planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish. You're like, I thought you were talking about worship. I am. Because it's one thing to worship. You can worship God wherever you are. You can worship him in the car. You need, we need to do those things. Worship him at home. But there's something powerful when you gather in his out of sanctuary with God's people with shouts of joy and celebration. There's something powerful about that. So God's like, look, you don't need to have that removed from your life. You need that uh, in your life, praise God. You know, there are two Hebrew words for thanksgiving. And uh, I don't want to sound, I don't want to nerd out on you on Hebrew, but they're really cool words and they're just fun to say. I mean, come on. And it's toda and yada. And no, that is not from Star Wars, and that's not the, you know, <laughs> it's Toda and Yada. And these are two Hebrew words for thanksgiving. Toda means to hold out the hand, an extension of the hand, especially to revere in worship. And it means actually to a vowel, like you're making a public declaration. Isn't that awesome? And then you have Yada, and it means to hold out the hand, <laughs> but it's different. It's like to throw it at, especially in worship when you're extending your hands. It's almost like you're just throwing it out there in a celebration to God. Uh, Toda, and let's all just yada right now, all right? Come on, you're just sticking, you're just worshiping God with them. You're like, God, I love you. God, I worship you. Come on, there's no way you're not going to get God's heart and God's attention. <laughs> you're like, what are you doing right now? You look weird. Stop it, I'm yadaing. All right? I'm yadaing at the, <laughs> to the Lord. 
toda and yada. So these two words have similar meanings. Both indicate the use of one's hands in expressing thanks to God, and both are also used in Psalm 100. And we see in verse 4, toda appears in the phrase, enter his gates with thanksgiving. So next Sunday, I expect us all to come in here like, oh, come on, what? You enter in, like, if you have a coffee in your hand, it's okay. You still got the one hand, all right? You still got the one hand. He said, enter with toda, enter with your hands, exalted. Why? It means you, you already know in advance, I'm coming for a party. I'm coming for a celebration. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Nothing is more depressing than a sad service. Nothing is more depressing than a boring church. Come on. We need to be excited. Our kids need to see us excited. There's joy in serving God. Weeping may endure for a night, and we go through things in life, but our kids need to see the, hey, I'm going to come into his presence still with thanksgiving, and I'm going to get my toda on. And then in verse 4, it also says, be thankful to him, which is the word yada. So we see in one verse, he was saying, toda, lift up your hands, and then yada. Just throw them out there. Come on. Toda has a connection with giving God thanks in in an offering of worship. Uh, Toda means to worship God with the extension of one's hands as as one honors the Lord with a sacrifice. And it goes all the way back to Leviticus chapter 7, when the high priest, when God instituted the peace offering, and the priest would take the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and they would just offer it up to God, like wave it up to God with his, with his hands. Psalm 141, 1 through 2 says, Lord, I cried out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Isn't that awesome? The lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice, God hears the cry of his people. The other night, Slade was really sick, and he called his mother, and she went running because mamas love their babies. And I was just thankful that she just, and I'm such a good dad too, because the way I rolled over and continued to sleep was amazing. I was so refreshed when I woke up. What, Slade was sick? I'm sorry, I missed that. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> it's like, I have my house trained, guys. I'm going to do a class. Even the dog goes to Mary when she's sick. She don't even come to me in the middle of the night. Right? <laughs> but I want to tell you right now, Heavenly Father is a lot better than, <laughs> than my fathering. But I want you to know, God hears the cry of his people. God hears the cry of his children, and there's no way God's going to sleep through your heart's cry, and there's no way you're not going to get God's attention when you come to him, and you say, God, receive my worship. I'm crying out to you. Come on. There's no way you're not going to have your heavenly Father's attention. Toda is an essential part of an offering and sacrifice to God. This means that our expressions of worship, both in our giving and in physical demonstration, should be done with the extension of the hands to God in thanksgiving for his goodness. You know, another expression uh, for the word toda is this word avow, and the word avow actually means to make a public statement. People say, well, I can worship anywhere. I don't go to go to church to worship. You do, but you can't fully worship without making a public statement. Yeah. It's ma- That's why it's so important to assemble together and worship. Why? Because I am making a public statement in front of everyone that he is my God, and I trust him, I love him, I'm thankful to him. And that's why it's so powerful when we come together and do it in one heart, and we're all making a public declaration together. I'm telling you, nothing gets God to a party faster when all his people assemble, and they're giving expressions and public statements of thanksgiving and praise to God. So that's why we clap, and that's why we lift up our hands, because the Bible tells us to do these things. You know, when I was growing up, my dad uh, did not give me explanations and sit down and give me a rationale of why he asked me to do certain things and why he wouldn't let me do other things. He would just say, because I said so. I was like, why? Because I said so. Yeah, but why? Boy, I told you because I said so. I was like, okay, all right, cool. 
You know, we don't have to always give our kids, sometimes they just need to learn how to submit to authority. It's just because I said so, and that's why. Right? Because God doesn't always give you a rationale. Why do we clap? Why does God like, like clapping of hands and shouting and, and lifting up? Because he does and because he said so. It's like, why are we doing this? <laughs> it's so easy because he said so. You just do what he tells you to do. He said, I like it, right? I like it because it's just an instinctual expression of joy. People in the world shout and clap. You know, isn't it amazing the camaraderie at a football game? I can go to Tuscaloosa, Alabama games, and I'm sitting by people. I'm talking scrunched in beside people. I don't even know. But, but before the game is out, I mean, you're high-fiving. You catch yourself hugging somebody. You're like, I don't even know you, man. Get off me. You know, I mean, you're, you're just excited. How much more should God's people, especially who people know each other, be excited, loving, high-fiving? Why? He's good. You don't know what I'm going through. We're all going through something. It's all right. You're not going through it alone. You got a church family that loves you, and you've got a God who's right there with you. It's just make a, continue to give that toda, that expression to God. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So as we assemble with believers in the congregation, we must do so by entering into God's presence with thanksgiving. This means that our expressions of thanksgiving should be given to God as an offering of praise. Yada is another element of expressing thanks to the Lord. Yada also means to extend the hand, but especially in a reverent worship. Although yada is similar in the form of thanksgiving as toda, there's a distinction because you know, yada is causative meaning that there's a cause behind the expression of thanksgiving. And Psalm 100 describes the cause of our thanksgiving in verses 4 through 5. He said, be thankful to him and bless his name. Here's the cause. For the Lord is good. He's good. You know, there's these church cliches that I try to stay away from because it just, you're like, all right, we've heard that a thousand times. But some of them you just can't help because they're just true. You know, the Lord's been better to me than I've been to myself. I'm like, all right, whatever. But, you know, you stop and think about it. He sure has. He's been way better to you than you've been to yourself. Matter of fact, he pulled you out of some fires because you weren't that good to yourself. He's good. He deserves more than a toe. He deserves more than a toe, <laughs> a toe tap. Come on. He yeah, pulled me out of some situations and some situations. Come on. Right, he's good. So he tells you, why should I give you this thanksgiving? For the Lord is good. His mercy is, not, come on, not just new today. It says it's everlasting. There's not a day of your life you're not going to wake up and his mercy isn't there. And I love this. His truth endures to all generations. We're living in a time of so much propaganda, so much craziness. What's up is down, and what's down is up, and it's just insane, right? It's insane. If the, today, if, they, if, if, if a government agency wanted to tell you that the sky was green, the news media would get behind it, well, the sky's green. Right? And then athletes would be like, hey, the sky's green. Check out these green sneakers. You want to buy them? And it would be this onslaught of media. The sky's green. Why? Because we said so. No, it's blue. No, you're crazy. That's disinformation. Yeah. Sky's green because we told you it's green. Right? We're living in some crazy times and it's lies. Yeah. It's just lies. It's so fake. But you know what? You're never going to get a lie out of God. His truth yeah. endures to all generations. His truth endures to all generations. The psalmist provided us with the cause behind the expression of thanks to the Lord for he's good, 
His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures. So when we enter into his presence with yada, by celebrating his goodness, mercy, and truth, that has impacted our lives and will continue to do so for future generations. I'm praising God because I've experienced the goodness of God in my life, and I'm thanking him in advance that my sons are going to experience the goodness of God in their life. His truth endures to all generations. My goodness. So Yada is, dis- is, is drawing this distinction between that praise and that worship. When we enter into worship with thanksgiving, uh, we take that, that first step into the presence of God. And so the Psalms are replete with expressions of thanksgiving, which is the word toda, right? So we see Psalm 50 verse 14, offer to God toda, thanksgiving, and pay your vows to the Most High. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come into God's presence and I'm, gonna, I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to give an offering. I'm going to give of myself both uh, uh, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. I'm going to give of my resources. What am I saying? I'm saying all that I am is God. He has the first place in my life. And it's not just this statement I'm making. I'm making a commitment and my life shows it in every way. In every way. I'm going to bring uh, uh, the offering of praise. I'm going to bring the offering of my resources. I'm going to bring the offering of my time. I'm going to bring the offering of my talents. Praise God. I'm going to bring everything I am to the Lord because he loves me with an everlasting love. Psalm 95 two. let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. In Psalm 147, 7, sing to the Lord with thanksgiving and sing praises. Oh, God likes it loud. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He likes it loud. You know, it's like, I don't know why um, we have this idea at church that it has, to be, it has to be quiet and somber. And there's times when God's presence is moving where there's a holy hush that comes. And there's a reverence of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, when you're praising God, it needs to be loud because Jesus likes it loud. He likes it loud. What I was going to say is, I saw this meme the other day, is that, uh, that Jesus would be, uh, his account, his social media account would be taken down. Because he would be saying things that are different from what the religious experts say, you know, it's true. But, you know, I'm here to tell you today that God likes it. Jesus likes it loud. He likes it loud. Amen. And, you know, as you get older, you know, when I was a kid, I was like, turn it up, baby. Come on. Now you get older, you're like, is it loud in here? <laughs> like my hair is vibrating. Uh, you know, it's kind of loud. But you know what? Jesus likes it. He says, come in here and make a shout. Come into his presence. And, you know, because the Bible says Jesus, the Lord, rejoices over you and me. And you know what the word rejoice means? It actually means to get up and spin around and shout. Isn't that crazy? So let's rejoice, people. If you took that literal, woo, I mean, you'd have to like, that's what it means. It means to jump up, spin around, and to make a shout. But your God isn't too ashamed to do that over you. That's my boy right there. Woo! I mean, come on. That's my girl right there. He rejoices over you and me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the rejoicing back. Sing praises on the harp to our God. God's like, let even the instruments make the sound of worship. And celebration to God. Amen? Yada, we see also in, this, in, in, the, in the scripture. Psalm 1849. Therefore I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. Psalm 30, verses 4 through 12. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. Verse 12. To the end, my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. I'm telling you, you've got to sing and shout the praises of God and determine not to be silent. Satan wants you to sit there and be quiet. But faith is a declaration. Faith is not faith just because you say, I believe something to be true. Faith is faith when you believe it and you act on it. Like Pastor Rick was saying last week, quit saying, but I, and start declaring, but God. And one of the ways you declare that is in your worship. 
when you're going through it, and you can still come up in here. I said yes, up in here. Come up in here and give God a praise. I'm talking, that's a declaration of faith. I mean, I'm going through it. My kids are acting crazy. My house is falling down, whatever. (laughs) I'm going to praise him, and I'm going to worship him, for the Lord is still good, and his mercy endures That's faith in that. There's faith in that. There's faith in staring right into the face of the devil and still declaring the goodness of God. There's faith in staring right at your Red Sea and still shouting and singing the praises of God. Anybody can praise him when the Red Sea parts and you go on the other side. But people of faith praise him in advance because they already know that he's good. In order to enhance the spirit of thanksgiving in our worship, we must develop thankfulness as an attitude. People bring their attitude into whatever they do. Unthankful people hinder their worship experience with a bitter spirit. You can see it on them. You can sometimes, unfortunately, see it at church. You know, you come in here with a, just got the thing. You're like, hey, how are you doing today? God bless you. Thanks for being here. You you don't feel like you should high five them or whatever. They might, But you know what? You got to leave that out there and come in here with thanksgiving. You have forced yourself. Come in here with thanksgiving. Because you know what? God don't want to be around you either with a bad attitude. Right? The other day, Mary said something to me about, boy, don't you have an attitude? I'm like, yes, and don't. Yeah. Get around me. <laughs> Guess what? God's like, fine then. I don't want to draw near either. All right? He draws near to the thankful heart. He draws near to the grateful heart. Amen. Well, that's why the old worship song says, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. And that is the expression of thanksgiving. I'm going to give you three benefits real quickly of, of thanksgiving. Number one, thankful people are joyful. You know, when you're thankful for what God has done and how God has blessed you, I'm telling you, even a bad day, you can find joy. You can still find joy. Amen. Thankful people are joyful people. People who have thankful spirit have a sense of joy. This joy is not only seen in, in, the, in, in our countenance, but it's also seen in how we express, on, express themselves. Joyful people express themselves with, with, with joy. Thankful people carry their joy and express their joy everywhere they go and with everything they do. It's the attitude of gratitude, and that's something we all need to develop. I said we, including me, the attitude of gratitude. I'm going to be thankful, and I'm going to start working to develop that, just that attitude of thanksgiving. You know, the life you're complaining about today was the one you were praying about a couple years ago. Am I, am I lying? You were praying for what you're... And said, like, Lord, you've brought me a long way, a lot longer and a lot further than I thought I was. I want to thank you and forgive my attitude. And forgive my attitude. My goodness. My goodness. You know what? You look at gas prices, you're like, oh, Jesus, have mercy. But look, let's, let's just at least be thankful that you're not some of the billions of people who live on less than $1 a day around the world. You're like, Lord, I'm still thankful. Amen. So Psalm 100, verses 1 through 2 says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. And I love these psalms of praise because they're always with an exclamation point. It's not like a, make a joyful shout. It's make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. It's like almost like a cheerleader. God's like, come on, people. You know I've been good to you. Praise me. I've got spirit. Yes, I do. I've got spirit. How about you? Come on. It's with an exclamation point. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord. The Lord's like, come on, serve me with some gladness. Quit acting like I ain't done nothing for you. That's the southern version of it. 
come before his presence with singing. A person's attitude emanates from his body language, his words, and the sounds he makes. So one doesn't need to be a discerning person to detect a bad attitude or a godly attitude. You don't have to have a gift of discernment to see attitude all over somebody. Right? You're just like, hey, don't be spraying your attitude everywhere in here. That's why thankful people enter into worship so much easy than an unthankful person. A thankful person it's like gets right in, but you know, an unthankful, bitter person, there's so much chipping away and stripping of things they have to get out of before they can just get to the place of thanksgiving that will then get them into the presence of God. God's like, look, don't step to me with all that, all that nasty. Right? Just let it go. Come on. Amen? So this is why thankful people, we, they enter so, so much easier into God's presence. Their thankful attitude allows them to come before the Lord with joy, the expressions of joy, as the Bible tells us to, with that shouting and with that singing. And you might find yourself in a difficult situation today, but if so, don't allow the bad circumstances to cause you to have a bad attitude. A bad attitude only serves to make a bad situation worse. God is good in spite of your circumstances, all right? Faith isn't a feeling. Faith is a fact. You're not always going to feel it, but you rise up in faith every day, and you walk by faith and not by your feelings. You walk by faith and not by your, by your sight and what you see you don't see. And so that's going to help you carry that spirit of thanksgiving. Number two, I'm hurrying, is thankful people have not only are joyful, but they have peace in their life. God is a God of peace. He's a God of peace. That's why Jesus is referred to as the what? The Prince of Peace. So when we worship the Lord, what are we doing? We're enthroning the presence of the Prince of Peace. One of the ways to get peace back into your life very quickly is to enter into his presence. And when his presence touches your life, there's going to be a sense of calm and peace come over you. It's just the way that it is. Philippians 4, 6 or 7, be anxious for nothing, Paul said, but in everything, in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God, will, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want, can you put this graphic up, guys, real quickly? I want you to see this about anxiety. Peace is the bridge. Excuse me. Thanksgiving is the bridge from anxiety to peace. We're living in a time of so much anxiety and depression. So many young people with anxiety and depression. But you know what? I want to encourage all young people. Do not give way to the spirit of this culture. Listen to me. Parents, listen. Do not let your kids give way to the spirit of this culture. Well, I've got anxiety. No. No, you don't. You've, you're in a situation that's making you anxious. That is an anxiety. Can you hear me? All right, I've told my kids, no, it's not anxiety. You're just dealing with something that's got you anxious. All right? That doesn't mean you're in full-blown anxiety. It just means you got to deal you guys love me? Yes. Come on, that's good right there. You need a, young people, young adults, please listen. Today it's just, I've just got anxiety and I'm just going over into depression. No, you're not. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We're not living a life like that. That's not what God called for you. You're just feeling, you're just anxious because of something you're facing or you're anxious because of something you're going through. But the key is you're going through it. You're going to come out on the other side if you stay Thankful. Amen. 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 I'm so oppressed. No, you're not. You're wearing $200 sneakers. It's just a, just, I'm oppressed. You, you got a $1,000 phone. You're drinking a $7 latte. You're not oppressed. You're just being lied to by the culture. I'm going to be, if, if y'all don't say amen, I'm extending this service. I'm not here to offend anybody except your flesh. You spend how many hours a week listening to the news and social media and work and all that? Come on. We need to make this hour and a half effective. 
You're not oppressed. So stop being depressed. You're just going through some difficulty like we all do in life because the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust, but the difference is how the just deal with it. We walk by faith, not by sight. It's created some anxiety in my life, but I don't have depression and anxiety as a result of it. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to start being thankful and Thanksgiving is going to pull me right out of anxiety and right into the peace of God. I love what Corey Tin Boom said. She said, look down and be depressed. Look around and be oppressed. Look up and be at rest. That's not a verse in the Bible, but you're like, too bad Corey Tin Boom was an apostle. That's almost, ver- that's worthy of like being a ver- verse in the Bible. What a powerful woman of God she was. Powerful woman of prayer. Her and her family helped save Jews during the Holocaust. And, and I had a privilege of going to her uh, her, her home or her father. Um, and man, years before, they were praying for the restoration of Israel. Man, what these people understood about Bible prophecy was amazing. But what a powerful word. Look down and be depressed. And that's where we are in our culture today. You know, I would encourage you, really turn the news media off. I've been saying it for year, two years now to you. You got to turn it off. My mom asked me, did you see about that? I'm like, no. Do you know what happened? Uh, no. Why? Because you know what? It is so flipping depressing when you Like, look, don't complain about it if you ain't going to pray about it. Yeah. You see what's happening now? Yeah, but you ain't praying about it. You just complain about it. And it's going to get, it's going to disturb your peace. So I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to be thankful. It's going to get me, and Thanksgiving is the bridge out of anxiety into peace. Amen? I didn't mean to harp on that, but that's good right there. And that's why you have, Todah is a Hebrew word for Thanksgiving that is associated with an offering. The Bible says that, uh, that we're to bring the sacrifice of thanksgiving. The peace offering in Leviticus was a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And peace is always connected to a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord. That's why the Bible says, I'm going to bring the sacrifice of praise. It doesn't seem that hard to come in here and just be excited and praise God. But some days it's harder than others. Some days you're going through some things that you weren't going through before. And it takes a sacrifice of praise. All right, I'm going to get my attitude right. I'm going to come to church. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. I'm going to go into the congregation. I'm going to make a public declaration with my fellow believers. And I am going to shout and sing and praise. I'm going to let the devil hear it. I'm going to let my enemies hear it. Come on. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to walk out with so much more peace. So much more power to face the situation. Amen? Praise God. Last thing, thankful people have an expectation. They just, they have expectation. They have joy. They have, they have peace. And they have expectation. Now, I love my wife. She's so positive. And she helps sometimes pull me out of living in the negative. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> Matthew, I thought we were boys. You're like, Amen. You need to get pulled out of the negative. It's like, man. Oh, Lordy. It's true, I do. But I just wasn't expecting you all to agree with it so loudly. <laughs> Golly. Right? Sometimes we do. Because what, what happens? You, you, you live in the negative when you just see what you say. You know, you see it and you just say what you see. Yeah. Right? And you start living in the negative. Well, this is the... You get in the negative quick like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mary's like, it's not that bad. I'm like, yes, it is. Because <laughs> we all have our days, right? But that's why... There's something powerful. If we, when you find yourself slipping like that, stop. Don't say anything else. And there's been times I'm like, God, forgive me. I take that back. Kill those words. Kill that attitude. And that's a good time to just start praising right there. Maybe put on a praise song. Do something. Wherever you are, just start. Lord, I love you. I mean, you know, you can clap on your own just where you are. because I know it's weird. In your house, but the Bible talks so much about clapping. I don't know what it is about the clapping of hands, but God, God's like, I made them and I gave them to you and they're instruments, so use them. <laughs> and just, I mean, you go, you'll turn a situation around. How? By turning you around. Yeah. Right? And it's going to build expectation. Hey, I got something good coming to me. Yes. You know, God's good and the Bible states that Jesus is a high priest of good things to come. 
Have you ever read that in your Bible? It's in Hebrews. It says that the, the covenant that we have today is a far better covenant than the Old Testament. That was a covenant that was based on the blood of bulls and goats and sacrifices that really didn't cover people's sins. It was just a pointing to the fact that Jesus was coming to be the ultimate sacrifice and that would cover your sin. And he said, so today we're living in a better covenant based on far better promises because of the blood of the lamb. And that is why he's the high priest of good things to come. I don't care what the media says is coming. I want to tell you right now, I've got good things coming because I'm serving a God who's given me a covenant that's based on better promises. So I'm going to praise him and I'm going to keep an expectation in my heart that something good is going to happen to me. Something good is going to happen to my family. Are you one of those crazy Jesus freaks? Yes. You one of those faith people? I thought that's how the Bible says we're supposed to live. By faith. The just live by faith. Amen? And so we worship with thanksgiving because the hope and expectation we have of God's goodness being demonstrated in our lives. Psalms, I got two more verses, and I promise you I'm closing. And that is not a lie. So give God. So give God praise, people, right? Psalm 62, 5 through 6, my soul waits silently for God alone. Uh, Listen to this. For my expectation is from him. Isn't that powerful? My expectation is from him. He is only, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I will not be Move. You don't be moved. You stand firm in your faith. You stand firm what you're believing God for. Why? Because he is my expectation and something good is coming to me. When our expectation is placed firmly in the Lord, the natural circumstances and human emotions cannot move us from that position. Proverbs 23, the, the last verse. Proverbs 23, 17 through 18 says, Solomon said, Do not let your heart envy sinners. But always be zealous for the fear of the Lord, which we know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But notice verse 18, there is surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. Man, that is so powerful. You ever looked at sinners and other people who don't really, they're not faithful to God and it looks like they're living their best life. And just because they tweeted, best, I'm living my best life, you're like, look how they prosper. And look how they're doing this. And look at all that. And I've been serving God. And I've been, I've been paying my time. My life ain't any better. Well, your life is better. You're just too nasty and angry to see how better it is. I just said that. Your life is better. You just got a bad attitude about it. And you know what? Guess what? Here's a newsflash. They're not really living their best life. It's just a fake Instagram filter. (laughs) Right? They're not that skinny, I want to promise you. They're not that suntan. They're not. They happen to catch their kids smiling at the right moment after they were crying and fighting. It's just a perfect little family. No, they're not. They're not telling you about how much debt they have. They're not telling you about how their marriage is in on the rocks. They're not living my best life. And then what happens? And Solomon's saying, don't envy a sinners. Because there's no hope in a future for a sinner unless they find Christ. He said, your hope and expectation is in God. And that's why on your worst day, when your kids are fighting and you're struggling, you can still post living my best life because I have expectation that something good is coming to me in spite of what I'm dealing with right now. So tweet that. Come on. So I hear that I can't, I said all of that today to tell you that you're living your best life. Even when you don't feel like it. Why? Because if Christ is living in you, then you have a high priest of good things to come. 
You don't have to live a fake life and try to show people how good things are when it's fake. You can just be you and be, and be content in knowing that I serve a good God, that he loves me, and I'm going to get up and be thankful for how far he's brought me. I'm going to thank him in my good days. I'm going to thank him in my bad days. I'm going to still be praising him on the mountaintops and in the valleys because through it all, I have a faithful high priest and he has given me a covenant that's better and it's based on better promises and something good is coming to me. A breakthrough is coming. I'm not staying down. I'm, I'm going up. I'm not staying in the pit. God is pulling me out. Amen. That's how you got to talk to yourself. Let's all stand. That's how you got to praise. That's how you've got to praise. I thought there'd be more praise going on right now. Come on. That's how you've got to praise him. You know, remember when David said in Psalm 105, bless the Lord, O my soul. And then he says it again, bless the Lord, O my soul. What's he saying? Some days your soul, your mind's going to get away from you. And so you got to remind your soul to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And he says it again. He's like, soul, are you listening? Huh? Because your soul can be just. He's like, he's, gra- he's getting, att- he's getting his, his own attention. <laughs> he's having to grasp his own attention. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Soul, bless the Lord. Why? And forget not his benefits. Don't you envy the sinner. Don't envy the wicked. Why? Because they don't have the benefits you have. What are the benefits? He says it. He forgives all my iniquities. Do, Do you know how big that is? That's not just the sin. Okay, we all sin and miss the mark. Sin is missing the mark. Iniquities are those crooked places in your life. Those are those things that get passed down. God says, I will reach in there and I'll snatch that iniquity out of your life and straighten your life up for generations. That's huge. Forget not all his benefit. He forgives my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. Huge. Trust him. To be the Jehovah Rapha of your life, the Lord your healer. Said he, he redeems my life from destruction. He satisfies my mouth with good things. And I love this one. And the older I get, the more I'm holding, I'm holding on to it. He renews my youth like the eagles. I mean, come on, a golf clap for that? What's wrong with you people? I said he, re- he renews your youth like the eagles. That's amazing. You're like, well, really, let's, we need to exegete that passage and let's really find the proper interpretation. You know what? Stop. That's what David said his benefits are. And if he said it in the Old Testament, how much more are they real today? Because you're serving a God, you're serving Jesus who's he's created a better covenant based on better promises, Hebrews says. How much more will he forgive your iniquities, heal your diseases, redeem your life from destruction, satisfy some of your mouths? Come on, our complaining. And then renew our youth like the eagles. Yesterday, we were, the boys and I had to clear out for the baby shower. So we went downtown to eat at this restaurant. I made nice with the, with the waitress. Because, you know, it's always good to make nice with people, right? But then I was like, you're dead to me. She told me, you look like you're about 47. I was like. <laughs> so, you know, I'm 46. But some days I do make 46 look like the new 47. I know. And she was like, well, I was just looking at your kids and how old they are. I thought you were about 47. I'm like, oh, those are foster kids. They're not mine. I was like, you're supposed to say 39 and maybe 40, but you went 47, girl. Come on. Here's a tip for you. You're not getting one. So what I had to remind myself, the Lord is renewing my youth like the eagles. I'm just making a funny, but the point is, is that these are the benefits. And you know what? If you go out and you go out this week and you don't worship the Lord and you don't give God praise, you'll start forgetting them. The world will beat your... 
but you have a benefit plan greater than the insurance card in your wallet. How do you access them? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his... Forget not all his benefits. Amen. Can you just lift up? Can you do that toda and that yada with me right now? Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. You're an awesome God. You're a great God. Worthy to be praised. Lord, we thank you. You've been so good to me. When I wasn't good to you, you were good to me. When I wasn't good to me, you were good to me. You've been good to me all the days of my life. You've been so faithful to me, God. Your mercy has pulled me out of situations. Your mercy has spared my life. Your mercy has brought me a long way. Forgive me for complaining, Spirit. Forgive me, God, for grumbling. Forgive me, God, uh, uh, of just saying what I see and not praising you and declaring with a mouth and a heart of faith and expectation. But Lord God, we just tell you how thankful and grateful we are. And God, today I just receive the benefits. Come on, just receive them right now. That God, you're forgiving my iniquities. You're cleansing me of unrighteousness. That Lord God, you're healing all my diseases. God, I'm walking in health and strength. Lord God, health and strength. God, right now I pray you touch every sick body. You touch every sick body, God, because you promised that you would Heal our diseases. You're the great physician. You're Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And Lord God, I thank you for that you're you're, you're, uh, redeeming us from destruction. You know, sometimes the destruction that God has to redeem you from is not only external forces that are sent to destroy you, but sometimes your own self-destruction. God, you're redeeming me from my own destruction and from my own demise. God, you're satisfying my mouth with good things. I will sing and shout and declare the goodness of God. And God, you're renewing our youth like the eagles. Come on, somebody. My brain is operating at a high level. Amen. My body, down to every organ, every muscle, every joint, God is operating. Come on, somebody. The way it's supposed to. We speak to your body right now. Every muscle, every joint, every ligament. Every organ, I thank you, Father God. Lord, our bloodstream is cleansed. God, every cell in my body is operating. God, I pray the way you've created it to operate. So that I can be an instrument for you and your kingdom in this earth, Lord God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And God, in your presence, there's peace. I just speak peace. We come against oppression and heaviness and the lying spirit of this world. Come on, you quit looking down. You quit looking around and you start looking up. Look up. Look up, look up. Look to the hills from where your help comes from. I thank you for faith and expectation that's bursting forth in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you receive that? Do you receive that? Thank you, Lord. You're healing marriages. You're healing families. Amen. Because the peace of God comes in and does what we can't do in our own strength. Amen. Would you please bow your head and close your eyes? If you're here today and you've never prayed to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then we, today's got to be your day to make Jesus your Lord. He can't be your Savior until you make him the Lord of your life. You have to submit your life, your future, your will, your plans to him. Lord, I'll make you the Lord of my life. And then that allows him to come in to be your Savior. So if you're here today, and you've never prayed. If you're watching online and you've never prayed to receive Jesus, just repeat this simple prayer with me and say, Heavenly Father, I believe that you sent your son Jesus. He was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He died on a cross for my sins. He was buried. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I submit my life to you. Be my Lord. And I ask you to come into my heart and be my Savior. I repent of my sins and I give my life to you. I ask you to use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, would you slip up your hand and let us recognize you so that we can pray with you and encourage you? 
If you're here, uh, excuse me, if you're watching online and you pray that for the first time, please log on to our website at surgechurch.tv slash I made a decision page. Fill out the form. We would love to connect with you and be a part of your spiritual life and growth as a new disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray you were blessed by the worship and ministry of our Surge experience today. It is our desire to see people experience a surge of God's power and grace that will empower them to live life beyond their limits. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for sharing the ministry of Surge Church with your friends and family and on social media. We love you and cannot wait to see you soon.